Okay, I think we're streaming and we are live. Let me just make sure the audio is a little bit. Uh, uh, make sure it's a little bit more uh, quiet. That should be fine. And then the window, here we go. All right, ladies and gents and everyone else, how are you? Everybody here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Grim Dawn. Uh, just going to do a little bit of farming and talking about the ARPG genre. Um, yeah, I, I actually do have some stash base. I, uh, let me, let me do that. I, I started auto sorting recently and that's, that can be a little helpful. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna keep auto sorting here. Oh, that, that made it worse. Um, hold on, I can make this better. Wait a That's a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, what, what's happening folks? Uh, hope everyone's well. Um, uh, so, ARPGs. There's my Ugden Blooms. So, right now I'm, I'm, I'm farming Ugden Blooms and I'm actually going to upgrade um, my tactician and give him a little more armor on his build. And he's actually looking pretty juicy on the stats. If I could just get the armor a little higher, he's going to be in a good spot. Um, so, I'm farming with my Saboteur because the Saboteur is a, fast, a faster farming character. Um, Again, this is the Ravager uh, killer after two hours and I got a hand cramp. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, like having low OA is, is painful, right? Like the problem is you have to have enough defense, like, and these squishier characters. Again, the Saboteur has like one or two meta builds that require both of these, I only have one, um, and uh, a set. You see the OA there, the the one ten OA. Well, that's going to help me go go a little higher, right? So there's things that you can use to make the build get closer to that three thousand, um, that that glorious three thousand number. But it's not easy, especially if you're playing self found like I am. So everything I build is is handmade and hand found. I can't just mod whatever I want and put the numbers together in a program. I can't do that. I'm playing a legitimate character with legitimate progression. So it's very, it's a different experience when you're self-finding. You can't play the game the same way. Um, but uh, for the purpose of our video today, I'm just gonna talk about ARPGs a little bit uh, before work today and get a start to my day. And uh, I, I was uh, looking actually over at our friends at PoE. Uh, so what's interesting is that the POE uh, is going through a full buy where it was like 90% ownership before and now uh, it's not. Are any of these even worth leveling stuff? No, I don't get it. Let's just get our Oogd uh, and Blooms. Uh, and so what does that mean? Well, it means that they had to, they made that that uh, transaction intentionally. Like, there's a reason. It's not just oh yeah, like uh, it's convenient to buy them all out completely. There's a reason why they did it. So the future, I don't know the answer, but the future has yet to be seen as to how grinding gear changes. I just found that interesting because I did that by mistake. I'm, hmm. I keep pressing the invincible. <laughs> um, so now, ten cent a, a a ten cent subsidiary is now a full owner of Path of Exile, and the sequel is coming out. I mean, all of this to me lines up with um, some interesting developments. Like, you don't just go into a game like this. When a sequel's coming out, or a studio, and and pull the plug on full ownership, there's a reason why you do it. Of course, to make money, but 
who who cares about that 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 transaction? Who's profiting from it the most? Tencent, subsidiary. Who like what division is saying? Hey, we need that we need that sale to go through right now. We we need we need that sale to exist. Who who is? It? I don't know the answer to that question, frankly. I, I, you know, Jonathan Majors is like, I know Chris Wilson's the community guy and, you know, founding, founding members, but so is Jonathan. And as of right now, um, Jonathan is listed as a, as the acting director. They mentioned it was a, it was a misfiling and Chris Wilson is still the guy, but I don't know if that's a sign. Like the misfiling, maybe there was a request. I, I, Chris may have mentioned it, but what I'm interested to see is, you know, as this uh, sequel, which was, by the way, just delayed, I can't believe it. Last Epoch comes out, you're all, oh, they had a freaking six month delay at the minimum. Oh my God, what a, what a mess. I mean, maybe it'll help them in the long run to have that delay. But man, being in tech, I, oh, I can't imagine. Like I work for executive, uh, you know, technical services for, for institutions. We have like, you know, partners and clients. I would hate to tell my client, oh yeah, you know, uh, our new thing isn't coming out for another year, even though we told you it was gonna be this year. You know, like that's the worst part about making deadlines and, and promises to customers. You're like, Oh, uh, it's going to come out then, I promise. But EOE is just terrible timing. I feel bad, actually. Like, you don't want that. You, you don't want that. So rough for that community. Here at Grim Dawn, uh, we are just lucky to have anything. And we're getting a big update. Fangs of Astrakhan. Uh, I believe a new character class as well and a whole new opportunity to enjoy this game in a different way. You know, a little bit, uh, a new fresh leveling experience. Although let's be real, people are gonna mod and just bypass all that. But hey, you know, it's like, whatever. Uh, for the hardcores like us, like the dedicated, we just play the game for real and enjoy it. Uh, we're around. We have a new experience. Hooray, like it's awesome. That's really, really awesome. Like I, the fact that a game that's like eight years old can have new content on it is amazing. It's super awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm really, really thrilled about it. And what will be fascinating to to see through all this is uh, a Wendigo Eye of Scorching, huh? 166 fire. An element? Away? Element and chaos? That's actually not like awful. It's, uh, it might have value somewhere. Again, I'm, I'm, I am too into not being ripped on a squishy character. And, uh, you know, this game's always referenced. I, they're just having insane damage, which it's kind of risky to build that way if you're not modding, to be honest, because getting those offensive stats high enough is, you have to dedicate everything into it and still have life leech. And, and I don't have life leech on, on, a, on a saboteur. Like I have some healing, but I don't have, I don't have dedicated leech. Um, that can really work well enough. So uh, I go a little more like defensive survive. That that like it's a little more obtainable for me to do that. So yeah. Anyhow, back on track. Um, I think that uh, you know look, Poe. They'll they'll be fine. Their community really. They have the hardcore ten to twenty thousand players that that will always support their game, that build the, the trade economy for them. Like, they're there, they're not going anywhere. But I asked that question a few months ago, 
And I got all those responses about like, yeah, if trade was removed, I would never play PoE again. It's like, shit. That's my point. It's like, why are you playing the game? Everyone has a different answer. The PoE community is very much Wall Street RPG. Like they want it. They want to experience Wall Street Robin Hood RPG. I get it. It's fine. You can like have fun. It's a game. Enjoy it. Um. But yeah, that, that's why I'm a Grim Dawn player, because I don't need Wall Street for me, but other people do. So it's just an interesting dynamic to see that, like, the game you're playing only is played for you because of external help. That's where it's like, wow, that's really dedication. That's dedication to your community. But, you know... I typically look at the base product and, and everything's on the base product. If the base product isn't good enough, I don't play. Like That's just my opinion. But hey, you do you because that's the whole nature. Enjoy what you enjoy and that's that's all that matters. No, nothing else matters. But uh, again, back to the sequel and interesting timing. I mean, you have Last Epoch coming out with like, it's maintaining 50 to 60,000 players regularly. We'll see how long the player base stays above, I wanna say 20,000. Typically these ARPG games, they don't, they don't maintain the biggest population. These are, these are hard games to get into. They're notorious, right? Like Diablo 3 ruined its, uh, you know, de well, hardcore, but it ruined the experience for dedicated players who wanted to try things out because they got rid of all of the learning aspects of the game. And they spoon fed you your character strength through outfits and like pre-made builds every season. Like, there was no other way to play legitimate. It was stupid. So like the casual audiences don't typically stick around for these games for more than a few months to hop and then they're gone. That's why like PoE doesn't care Grinding Gear doesn't care about casual players. They leave. Time in and time out. All these games muster is like a 10 to 20,000 player base. They're not, they're not sticking around for years. The ones that stick around for years are the ones that are keeping the trade economy and the real money trade economy and the botting market. Let's be realistic about it, folks. Don't pretend it's not there. Uh, those things are there. and But they keep, they're the ones who play for years. Like, Grim Dawn, I came back to, I took a long break in between, um, you know, playthroughs. I played a few years ago when I first got it, I, like five years ago, six years ago. And then, like, I I was not good. Like, the character, this was the character I learned the game on. So I was playing the shitty saboteur, it was awful. My build sucked. I didn't know, like, you know, exactly what I had to do or prioritize. And then... Uh, you know, I did do a little reading on the generalities of, of what matters. And then, like, I came back a few years later and I, like, I resumed where I left off. And I, I, now this character can do, like, Celestials difficultly, but it can. And it's like, I thought a lot about, uh, to be frank, I also found more items to use. So that was helpful. But... Like, just knowing your priorities. And, and there's still ways this character could get a lot better. Like, the shitty OA stat does not help things. The, the crit rates are awful. But this character does have a lot of shred. So, for non-celestials, I can still crit, at least. I guess there's that. So, you know, I, I think, look. There's always going to be an audience. The hardcore audience. Uh, they keep these games going and keep the devs passionate about their projects. Now we're looking at PoE2, right? This is what I wanted to talk about, right? This is what I wanted to like get at. It's a really interesting time when you're building a sequel. There's a lot riding on it. There's a lot of, uh, you know, at, at stake as a company. Don't think for a second, like right now, the offices at GGG are stressful. I can tell you right now that they are stressful. I can tell you that the employees are going through a lot right now because that is the fact that it's delayed means that they went through testing, they weren't satisfied. 
that's painful. You have deliverables. You're a 10 cent company and your product is delayed. I guarantee you there were some difficult meetings internally or with the investing groups and the stakeholders. I can guarantee you that Jonathan was sweating at some of these presentations. I, I like, there, there, there's no way around it. And, and they have to be honest with it. Now, it looks like this transact, now this announcement, by the way, came after the acquisition was official, I believe. We, we saw records of it today, the, the, the record, but that 100% acquisition was made, probably in confidence <laughs> that the sequel was going to be ready. <laughs> and now they're not ready. Oh, God, to be a fly on that wall. Oh, to be a fly on that wall. I, man, oh, man. Like, don't. That's why I, I don't hate these folks. I, I wish them the best in their endeavors because, holy shit, that is a terrible, terrible position to be in. To not be able to deliver after a after a full buyout. Oh, hopefully they didn't forecast to those buy to the investors. Hey, this sequel is gonna make us X amount of dollars. Get ready, the hardcores are coming, and oh yeah, we're gonna engage a whole new casual market to, you know, to buy the stash space and the and and some of the outfits and shit, the the loyalty packs, and you're gonna make this much money by our calculations. And our revenue, uh, you know, re revenue uh, builder, editor. Here's what you're gonna get, man. Thanks for investing in us. Oops, game's delayed for another six to eight months. Oh, oh. yo! I've never found this, I don't think. What the hell, random legendary? See? Hey, hey, PoE. I just found a random fucking chess piece from a from a bunch of skulls. Uh, have I found it? I may have found this, or I may not have found this. Uh, I might have this, but that's cool. See, in PoE, that happening like that way would be very unlike. Uh, that's funny. Oh, I did the invincibility back. Yay. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, just a man, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, you know, back here to Grim Dawn. Uh, you know, we can talk a little bit about this game. So it's again, you have this legacy title getting new content. What a what an awesome decision by uh, that Zentai, I think is the guy he goes by. And uh, and what a what a decision. What a what a choice to bring content to an old game. Like, that's dedication. That is... And Grim Dawn's an indie title. Again, I, like, PoE is not an indie title. Grim Dawn is an indie title. Super amazing. You have all this uh, potential. And it's not even, like, really being funded. The whole, like, we know Forgotten Gods was off. Malmuth is good. Malmuth is solid. There's a little bit of rough around the edges in Malmuth. Like, some of the map designs, like, I really don't like the uh, the, the town area. It's it's not well made. I'm going to be frank. I'm going to be 100 frank. I don't like the map. I don't like the map. The, the the stairs don't work properly all the time. It's It's not easy to traverse that terrain. And again, this is not a perfect game. But, you know, we're talking about, in the grand scheme of things, small fucking potatoes. We're talking about small fish, man. This is not a big deal. When you're talking about all the value that this game offers, replayability, access to, to a bunch of different, you know, play styles and, and, you know, ways of enjoying it. And having one of the best character progression and gearing systems in the genre. I don't care. People say PoE is the best gearing bullshit. PoE is uh, a one in a billion, like, bought fucking economy simulator. It's not a great gearing system, no. Base gear is trash in PoE. Base gear in Grim Dawn is fucking awesome. The crafting components are a small portion of the show, not the leading portion of power. And that's the difference. The actual gear itself in Grim Dawn 
is fucking awesome. The actual Gear of Grim in Path of Exile is absolutely terrible. So, like, there you go. Base gear being good, being desirable, being flexible. You can, like, mix and match in interesting ways. You can use offensive components and defensive components. You can, like, add these stats in creative opportunities. And in, 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 again, in PoE, it's like, You've got to have a one in a billion craft or have a bot farming community do it for you. Yay! Like, you know, it's not it's not the same. But we have a lot of potential with this update in uh, Grim Dawn, and it's going to be an exciting time for us Grim Dawn, Grim, Grimmy heads, Grim heads. Uh, we're going to enjoy it. So I am very excited about it. We're going to the Winterlands, the Tundras, Mountains. We're gonna have a new, you know, a celestial or two, or who the hell knows? We're gonna have new bosses, new challenges to to overcome. I think thematically going through as the saboteur with a fire build is gonna be a nice contrast to the environment. You know? See, I'm not even like I'm barely critting this guy. Like, oh, low OA is terrible. It's awful. But I built this really to survive big fucking attacks and encounters more than anything else. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. I Look, will, will it have the same or even more replayability and value that Forgotten Gods did? Because let me tell you something. Forgotten Gods is one of the great expansions I've ever seen. When you compare what it gave you to the base product, Forgotten Gods is, is tremendous. Its own lore, its own story, its own world, its own priorities. It's like, what? After we had another world expansion in the base game that has secret areas and secret bosses that you've got, like, frankly, I had to go look up how to do some of them, like the Mad Queen. It's like, you'll, these are base games. And then you've got this whole new section and world with its own priorities and story and and lore. There's, there's going to be the same thing here, but what's gonna be fascinating about it is like what is it? we had core back so here's my you know looking at my limited understanding of the lore in this game i don't really follow game lore to be honest with everyone i don't care if i want to watch a movie or read a book or, or watch a tv show I'm, i'll do that if i'm playing a game i want to play the fucking game but the context i kind of get you know there's like there's three different factions with gods and devotees and they, you know, humanity has to figure out their place in all of it. And they're like, you know, it's just, it's just a cycle of hatred and conflict. But ultimately in Forgotten Gods, we, you know, challenged Korvac, the avatar of Korvac, uh, who was, you know, sending, his, you know, devout followers, you know, through Kaiman, Father Kaiman, uh, so Kyvan's uh, devoted, they, they, uh, but Kyvan's chosen, Kyvan's chosen, uh, they were, were following this allegedly great priest who was a beacon of, of light and hope, but then you see what he's really is with, with Korvac, and he's a giant fucking monster in a, in a, in a chamber of magma. All right, that's, uh, yeah, sure, that's who I'm following for hope and light, yes, of course. When I think hope and light, I think magma and the pit of despair. Yes. So we get rid of Kaiman. Kaiman's gone. Uh, Theoden's gone. Uh, the guy in uh, in Malmuth, who was an ethereal construct. I don't actually know the full lore. Uh, but with the ethereals, you know, they think they need their land back. So we got rid of one of the main scourges the sources of ethereal influence. And that's uh, interesting, right? So we got rid of that. So what is left in Aster Cosmos? Here's the thing. I think that it's going to be more Chthonia. I think we're heading back to Chthonia because we had kind of this new breed of, uh, of enemies in the 
Forgotten Gods, and I think we will have new enemies in Astarkon. Like, we'll probably have more creatures, like wolves and, and uh, I don't know, they may have actually showed a couple in the uh, demo, but I'm like, I'm thinking, oh yeah, yetis? Like more of those uh, in Act 3, Zone 3 creatures, probably. I mean, that's my guess, right? But what what god? Would they Salial? Um, would we be getting maybe into Salial? Maybe. I, I don't know. Um, Bishmael? Would we be going into Bishmael? Maybe it's Bishmael. Or Bismile. I don't know how you say the name, but... And that would be really interesting. So... Wait a minute, Mogdrogdon. It's Mogdrogdon. Oh, wait a minute, Mogdrogdon is in Act 3. Avatar of Mogdrogdon. It's probably Mogdrogdon. Right? Unless they, they may have already said. I, I just throwing ideas out. But either way, no matter what we get, I think it'll be fascinating. It'll be interesting. And I look forward to it. The the enemies. There we go. That yeah, nice Boogden Bloom farming. Um, we are going to now update my tactician. And, uh, give him more armor. <clears throat> Which, by the way, armor is now going to be more valuable than ever before. When they do this, this rebalancing of physical damage, they're going to make armor a lot more important. I just want to make sure I can craft both of them. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put on Enchanted Earth. I need I need Restless Remains. I need uh, seven more. Because I'm going to replace these Silk Swatches here with Restless Remains. Or with the Earth. I don't have... I don't have Oh, I have to actually craft them with my saboteur. Oops, I, I forgot that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's do that. We will get those. Okay. I forgot. Like this was Horvac, probably yeah, like a mixture of Mugdragden and something else. But it'll be interesting to see how the lore matches. Because you go through Act 3, Mogdrogdon's avatar is there, but Mogdrogdon himself, we haven't, we haven't fought the actual gods yet. We've only fought avatars of these gods. Uh, so that's interesting. Will we see or access the direct gods themselves? That will be fascinating. Hmm? Oh, I'm gonna flip out, man. So I need, wait, I need money. Oh my God, I need cash. I need cash money. I need to get money. How much is it? I get an iron bar. How much is it for that? Not expensive, right? It's how many per craft? It's 1,500? All right. I mean, that's going to cost me a bucket. It's going to cost me a bunch because I need to make seven of them. Oh! <laughs> oh. Who, who has money? Uh, yes. That is a pain in the ass. The joys of... The joys of... The joy of here. I will do that. Huh? Um, things I can sell possibly from this character. These two things. Whatever, brah. All right. Uh, how was my apostate looking on cash? Hang on a second. 
Let's see if I can get if I can get another iron bar. I forget what I think I'm poor on this one too. I did I did a lot of um respecting recently. And I'd have to go farm uh, farm effigies. A pretty good way to make quick cash. Turn off your item filter and go farm effigies in Lost Gods. You can farm them right, you know, uh, in that first region. Oh no, I'm actually I'm loaded. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So we're we're good with that. Let's go to Forgotten Gods. All right, we're good. We are doing fine. Yay. Speaking of a character I'm working on, but like, it's just I'm too squishy right now. I can't even be Korvac right now. Um, you know, I'm going for like a vampiric apostate. It's just, it's it's very challenging. I, I don't, it doesn't work at the moment. What am I doing? Get the iron bar. Iron bar. I wish to purchase. Now, no, I gotta do one more. Huh? Oh. There we go. Because I have to also craft the other things, which costs as well, and I hope I have enough for that. All right, three iron bars. Let's see if I can do this. All right. Statistically, this is my best character. Statistically, on paper. Getting this extra armor is it, it's just what I need. Um, this tactician is, is is actually I'm looking forward to how it progresses in the update. I am, but I can do it right here, right? Yeah. Uh, I need to I need to exchange my iron bars because yeah. I. By the way. The update is probably going, well, it's funny. It could go past the necropolis up in here. I think we're, we're going this way, Fort Iken and maybe into the mountains. That's what I think, that's where I think we're heading uh, for this. Now, when they made this window for Corvin Basin, that was cool. I mean, we could get another window. Uh, we could get a window like up here. They could put like, you know, past the cop. Or whatever it ends up, right? So, just a thought. Um, yes, I understand. All right, we're going to exchange. Now. Uh, here they are. Oh, yeah, I was playing around with that. Uh, Oh, wait. All right, you go there. For yes. 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 Oh, look, I have a little bit of cash now. Oh, all right. All right, I need seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I need enchanted earths. Go. One, two. Yeah. We got enchanted earths. Now we got to go to the. Uh, that uh, item individual. Remove the swatches and. Okay. Yes, a little bit more armor is very helpful. Keep item. Yes. Yes. And here we go. There we go, a little bit more armor. Now that helps. So every little bit of armor is gonna have a really important value to your character 
as this game evolved. Like, um, look at, <laughs> um, I, I, by the way, I just have enough spirit on this character for, for like some of the rings, um, which is the one, no, 360. But if I get, if I, if I, like this one has 40 spirit on it, and then this one has, uh, is health and physique and OA. Um, these attack rings, these attack items are very important. But here's, so, you know, transitioning a little bit. Here's, um, I've updated this character a bit. I, you know, I'm at 28, 10 here. Like, that's not awful. You, you boost your armor with uh, Word of Renewal. Now I'm at 34, 14. I'm almost at the lowest chance to be hit with this up. That's really awesome. You know, I have other mitigation sources, um, but I'm, I'm building out this character. It's not done, but this was the first major step towards what I wanted this character to look like at a certain point. So, you know, it's uh, still not like clearing content that fast. It, it's not using the most damaging skill um, breakdown at the moment. Like right now, it's actually using uh, Blade Arc uh, with Laceration, but like uh, Cadence is probably just better to spec all the way into. And frankly, the way this is working, I'm kind of using Blade Arc for the heal. Because this this awesome item right here has uh, damage on blade, uh, health is damage on blade arc, and uh, that's really cool. Like that's awesome to see. Um, so then I also have Alaron's Might, which reduces targets damage when I hit them with this uh, like this this cleave right here. And I also have cleansing waters on it as well. So I've stacked cleansing waters onto this debuff attack. So for those of you who don't like how I've done the devotions with this guy, um, cleansing waters right here, all around might. So these cleansing waters, they get rid of beneficial auras and spells from foes. So if a, if a, one of these annoying monsters has like a a regen or a or something that like you know boosting their energy sap or leech or or whatever it is, um, it also gets rid of negative ailments and DOT effects. Now it only lasts for a second, but again you're removing those abilities so all the damage that's happening to you halts all the negative impact they just it's almost like you having the arcane skill that like completely disables the skill then the enemy has to recast it on their own cooldown so you also slow the target for eight seconds so that slows down how often they do their actions so in group situations it actually really helps right and of course, this also reduces damage as well. So not only not only am I reducing damage, and I have two knockdowns against uh, you know mobs. So now with this extra armor, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Like that's that's uh, really fun to see. Um, we're getting there now. Some really elite builds have over four thousand armor. I'm not there. Uh, trying to balance OA and DA as much as I possibly can at the moment. All my resists are solid. Um, let's just go in and see, you know, how it does. A little bit of that extra armor. What do we got? More health. Oh, that's actually not bad. So good. We can just like... See, I'm taking damage from these morons here, right? Like these casters will damage me. Lightning damage. So, yeah, it's like... Hey, we got...
like cadence, probably maxing out cadence is a good idea. I'm probably gonna have to just end up doing that. But yeah, like these these casting style characters, uh, they uh, you can see it's not really a farming character. It is a face tanking more or less style character. But what's cool about this build is it acts like a uh, an aura knight, so like a paladin sort of thing. And right now, what really makes it is. Uh, the double Earth Ward. Again, I mentioned this in a previous session, but I have double Earth Ward. Um, and all this damage reduction on these skills, it adds up, man. It, it's not like you're completely nerfing the, the, da the damage in this game, but like, you know, you're, you're able to do some interesting stuff with it. See, when I'm in one of my bubbles, this goes to about 100% resist on the elements. So again, having these, these Inquisitor seals is so important for Inquisitor style classes. Uh, you gotta have them. So, Korvac will take a long time. I'm not going to actually fight Korvac with this character. It just takes too long. To um, like, I'm taking a little bit of damage there, but if I put this down... Oh, now it's much better. Once I have the Inquisitor seal down, these elemental attacks don't do much to me. You, but, so you got to play with these seals. And that's why a lot of people don't like Inquisitor, because the buff from that seal is too powerful for the class. So you can't really function well without it. Um, unfortunately. Like, it's one of those one of the things where I do kind of wish that Inquisitor had some more tools in its box. Yeah, man, this is good. Without without the um, with the Inquisitor seal in play, like I'm I'm in doing well. Um, look at all these see these guys hit you with a lot of different things. Um Damage every second. I don't have my 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 shield up, but it looks like I do have Earth Wards, presence and Earth Ward going. Um, when I put the seal down, you know, it's good. Like these these effects all hurt. They do. They they they, they all hurt. These aren't celestial bosses, but they hurt. Another way to play a character like this is just continually having a much more impressive form of leeching. And I did think about putting on this. So, Mythical Butcher of Burwich. Um, I could really go into this. Uh, I can also increase my character's cunning stat and make it so that I'm critting way more with this and possibly have that be like the face tank build I'm looking for instead of this Earth Ward item. And it'll do more damage and it'll regen my health and I have enough beef behind it to keep it relevant. Because right now, um, what am I at? I'm at 15 spent points. Yeah. Like a lot of physique here, like a lot of physique. I, I probably could even tone it down a smidge. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I could go up to like maybe 25 points in the cunning. I have a couple of respec potions available, not, but only a few. Like, I don't want to waste them. I have to go through other playthroughs and get more of them, and I'm not modding them in. So I have to be a lot more deliberate if I ever choose to do that. Because my time is precious, and I don't, you know, I'd have to farm a character from, from, from scratch all over again, uh, so. Yeah, like, see, these are, see, if you go look in here, right, like, this, these damage sources only with 68 resistance actually hurt you. They do. They, you get electric, these guys can hurt you if 
you don't have over 100% elemental risk. But you've got to make choices. If I lose the, the damage numbers, it just makes the build really slow. So, like, this, a character like this is still taking damage. Right? Like, all this seems to be in your favor. But you still take damage. Like, I can't get frozen. My life leech is, is over maximum, so my, my HP can't be drained. Um, I have a little bit of disrupt. I have a lot of resistance to slow. And so, like, you know, I have some reflect resist as well. But, like, this is where, again, like, these ultimate builds have so much armor. Um, but you can still take some damage from sources like this. Just showing you guys like how it works. So, you know, getting again that little extra. Now again, I'm gonna put the seal down uh, and stand in it. Here we go. I wish they would increase the range slightly of Inquisitor Seal by like maybe a, uh, just a few meters. That would make that would completely change everything. Look at that. See the difference? Just like, yeah. So much more just capability in the seal. So that's why people don't love the build. It's like being a tactician because of the seals. And you have to use them. So anyway, but I like tactician. And you've got to be tactical, right? You gotta be tactical. With the seals up, with the debuffing going on, uh, it's a good day. It's a good day in the. I just gotta respect the skill uh, skill points and uh, refocus them. It takes again. It takes a lot of. I could use a potion to respect, but. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is worth I'm not gonna kill Korvac, it just takes too long. I just wanna, like, show, like, taking on Korvac's hits. How does it do? Very nice. Let's see what it does here. Nice. You know, not, more armor, this wouldn't go down at all, but... Yeah, you know, it's progress. This character uh, has beaten John Bourbon. You've seen videos of that in the past. Uh, with a more damage-focused loadout, it beats Mad Queen handily. Uh, I was, you know, thinking about how would this deal fare with Ravager? Is my armor high enough? I don't know if it is. But if I'm standing in a seal, I mean, my bleed, I would really spec in the bleed resist. Like, dude, Korvac hits like a truck. He still does to this day. Don't get it twisted. Like, Korvac hits hard. Uh, he's a great test for Bill. Like, you're, you're seeing the numbers. Once that armor goes up again, and I'm in the seal, it goes above 4K armor, that's when you're, like, not really worried about anything. 4,000. That... So, again, this is why kiting, squishy characters, it's a different type of game. You, you, you're playing a totally different game uh, with, uh, with squishy, kitey characters. Like, took out 9,000 health after successive hits. Now, of course, I'm not hitting him. If I keep, if I hit him a lot, like this, I nerf his damage all the time, it's a different story. So. That's how it works. Now, another like, example. I could change this. Now, I don't want to, but 
I could put on Golemborns. I could put on... I mean, I don't know. There's a lot I could do with it. Like, right now, you get that offensive ability, which is super helpful for a tanky character. And, uh... Yeah. I have Assassin's Mark II on this character with two Cadence. So that's helpful. Assassin's Mark debuffs enemies as well. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of crits off on Korvac. That's nice. You know, he, you know, those darker orange colors, those are bigger crits. That's nice. Debuffed. I am trying to be for that. Glad I'm not. It just feel long. It takes. It takes too long. Um, but yeah, there's a there's kind of the idea. When the game is rebalanced again, I'm I'm prepping this guy up for the update because when this becomes more viable, when this becomes less important or even a lower value, we got to see how they balance it. I don't know how they're going to balance. It. I'm really curious about it. I just... I don't know. The other thing I could do is obviously using Overguard as a skill. It's something I could do. Um, just having it on the skill bar Again, maybe I forego Blade Arc. I would have that being, uh, you know, the next, like, I could have Overguard here. I'll just have Cadence being the attack source. Um, maybe that's what I do. See, like, he's breaking through my armor. Like, so watch how this hits. I still hit that well with no with no barrier up or, or renewal. That's nice. There's stone form from my devotions helping. Right? That's that's nice. See how these hit me. Boom. Okay, like so again. With some tinkering and tuning, um, a character like this could be interesting. Again, if I get Overguard going, that could just be a super helpful option. Um with of course, I'm using a legendary that benefits Overguard, right? Right here, the Colossal Grip. So I may value that more. I could just add it to the bar. The question is, what do I replace? And that's something I just have to try. Um, wait, what am I doing here? So I got to figure out what I replace. I don't know. You know, I... Like, I have this because of the crit damage. You know... Maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Crit damage... Um... Uh-huh. I don't... Like... I... You, you gotta... You gotta have this at max. Barrier... Barrier's, like, just too important. You gotta have it. I don't know. I... I don't know if I can reduce that. You know, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's an interesting idea. So anyway, that's uh, that's gonna be it, I think, guys, for today. I do have to go, uh, but I'm interested. I'm looking forward to seeing how Earthward could happen, help uh, a build like this. At some point, maybe I can get a new helmet. Actually, that is something I need to do. I want to get a different helmet with good armor on it. I think, you know what? I'm going to do that. Uh, I just want to quickly check what I've got, the refresher. Let's just, 
I think at you know at a certain point you want a good armor helmet. Quick check and then I have to go. Uh, yeah, the day is the day is getting started for me. Gotta get some things done. Um. Uh, okay, so... Wait, before I... Hang on. So, uh, I think, um, helmet, helmet, I was, you know, you got the Korvac, the helmet, right, but, uh, you got one to all Inquisitor, one to all Soldier, I mean, but you get, again, I want that armor stack. I really want that armor stat. I'm telling you, I want that armor stat. It's uh, these uh, gazes have a really good armor value on them, although they have lower base armor. So would a beefcake helmet like this just be better? You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like with that, you get the war cry, uh, speed it up a little bit. You can pop it more often. That's where it's like. Okay, interesting. Could I find... Could I find one that has uh, I don't know, just a better overall... Like, I've used this one before, 18% armor. You got the extra health, but you lose the OA a little bit. It's... Well... It's more armor, isn't it? <laughs> It is more armor. You, you lose 33. I do go below 28. I could put on more bladed plating, which is right here. But I like that armor absorption too. Uh, it's close. Mm. It's close. I, I I don't know. It's, it's a close call. Uh, I was also looking into changing this at some point. Um, you gotta change this eventually. The twelve percent cunning is super helpful. Um, But I, you know, I can get a better one of these. All skills is nice. Oh yeah, there was this one shield damage block. This is a medium item. None of this is really good. Um, now. Um, no, 54, 15% armor, a little more OA, and physical damage is a little lower, but, but hold on a second. Spirit as well, I, I need the, it's actually a higher spirit roll. I do lose the, ah, I lose the Aether resistance, that's what it was, fuck. Ah. That's why, oh man, okay. Okay, well. Okay. That one sucks. That's a high physical damage.
So yeah, like, I would need some sort of chosen gaze, maybe something like this with a better armor roll. Again, you're working your way up. It's challenging. Um, I could forego uh, the Uchtenbog leather, even though I had to farm to make it. Um, could do that. Um, I did go with Oleron's blood here. I do like this quite a bit. That reduced target damage can't be understated. It really might come down to me, you know, changing this a little bit, perhaps. Uh, I might use different pants at some point. Actually, there's a chance that I do. Uh, the avoiding melee attacks can't understate dodge. 8% dodge, not great, but when you think about it, when you're getting hit a lot by minions and they add, that 8% adds up, um, there's a chance that it could, you know, you know, keep that damage to a rate that is helpful. I, this thing is freaking amazing. Gildor's is awesome. This is a Amazing. Uh, my armor absorption is a hundred. I might just put something with more armor onto that, like another Earth. Then I'd be at if the twenty percent though takes it down. I, I'm not sure. I do kind of wish that it. Uh, if you were, like, maybe if you had overcap, or if, like, it showed you how much you are statistically at outside of the 100%, that would be helpful. That'd be helpful to know. Um, I put this belt on recently for the offensive ability, and it's helpful. If I found a rare belt, a double rare or something like that, something really viable, it could be better. It could get, you know... Uh, physical with, with something else on it but at the moment this is this is nice uh, it does boast Markovian's advantage but you know I, I was going more into cadence but yeah I think it's there's some there's some there's some uh, ways I can kind of like mix and match here and, and think about it. I have this too, right? So uh, something, a, a rare chest, if I found like a double rare, uh, a core of armor or something with the of attack. And I love Gildor's Guard, which is why I don't, I don't want to get rid of it. It's, it, it's really powerful. Gildor's, the Gildor's Guard on block you get more shield damage blocked, more retaliation damage, but maybe it's not worth it. Maybe just getting to that close to that 3K OA is what I need. Maybe Gildor's Guard is just a joke. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. You know, blocking more shield damage against the biggest hits in the game probably doesn't even save your ass. Pro I, I don't know. Uh, it's, you know, you got six seconds of it being up. Does it, does it mean everything? You get a lot of health out of this build, and health is going to be important as well. Health and armor are going to have more value. Um, so, but maybe I want that three, you know, there's things I have to consider. That's what you got to do in this game. You got to make choices and consider what you're going to do. But ultimately, it just comes down to trial and error and trying things. That's it. That's all you can do. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Uh, thanks for staying by for the rant.